Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. This one is a big one. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. First up is a shameless plug on the video I did last week about how you can get help or support with Power BI. The first item I called out in there was search, and I definitely recommend you take the time to search for items before posting it in other spots. You'll be amazed what you can find. I'll also have a link down in the description below for a video that Ruth Pozuelo did on the topic as well, and I have a link out there to the Power BI documentation. I can't tell you how many times when I've answered questions, the answer was in the documentation. So please take time to read that. There's a lot of great stuff in it and it's getting updated all the time. Marco Russo's got a post where he's talking about a free introduction to data modeling. So him and Alberto over at SQL BI, they put out a free course on getting started with data modeling. I definitely recommend you take the time to go through this. It's free. A lot of the issues I work on with customers deal with performance and just, you know, it's slow. The report's slow, whether it's in the service, in Power BI desktop, and the majority of the time, it's gonna come down to the data model and how it's actually, how the data is structured, the measures that go within that. But this course focuses on just getting that introduction into data modeling and what you need to be thinking about when you're building your data inside of Power BI. So I definitely recommend take the time, go through this. I promise you won't be disappointed. Melissa Coates has a blog post talking about data flows and three ways you can use data flows with Power BI. So this walks through the creation of data flows, using data flows with bringing your own Azure Data Lake storage subscription, and also how do you consume data flows inside of Power BI. So this is a great blog post, just going through. If you're not familiar with data flows, definitely check it out. She also did a webinar for data flows last week, and I will have a link down in the description below, along with the blog post that she had, and all the other items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So definitely go check it out. If you're watching this roundup on the day that it was posted, tomorrow there is going to be a live stream of what's coming next for Power BI. This is being dubbed as the Business Applications Virtual Launch Event. You have to go up and register for it, but then on April 2nd, you can watch that live stream and see what's coming for Power BI. This is a buildup in April as we get closer to Business Application Summit in June. So if you're interested in that, check out the link down in the description below and be sure to register and watch it on Tuesday, April 2nd. The mobile app for Windows got a very cool update introducing presentation mode inside of it. So this means you can actually have a slideshow for your report and this will just go through the different pages in the actual report. So there's a little play button you can use to actually go do that. So this is really cool. If you wanna do like a slideshow on a TV, just sitting in a location, you can go ahead and use the Windows mobile app for Power BI and end up playing the items to go through the different pages in sequence and just have a slideshow for your report. So be sure you update to the latest Power BI mobile app on Windows to get this feature. I would argue this is probably the biggest announcement that came out of last week, even this year, and maybe ever for Power BI. XMLA endpoint read-only is now available for Power BI Premium. What does that mean? So the way I describe it to folks is XMLA endpoint, because most people are like, what the heck is that? Think of it as a connection string, an analysis services connection string to a Power BI workspace that's sitting in premium capacity. Yes, I know this is premium only. I get a lot of comments on that, but this is still exciting and opens up a ton of possibilities. So just imagine you can connect third-party tools, anything that potentially connects with analysis services, here you go, it's a connection string. You can just connect to your data set and then power your third-party apps with a data set sitting inside of Power BI. You can also connect any of the tools for analysis services to that data set as well. So Management Studio, SQL Server Data Tools, any of those items, Profiler Trace, all of those items are now available as well to connect to that. It does require premium capacity, but you will get a connection string if you go to your workspace settings 
and then just plug that in. You also need to update to the latest version of the analysis services connectors. So this is the ODBC driver, the .NET provider, so on and so forth. Again, links as always down in the description below. Go check it out and have some playtime with it. All right, what was your favorite item this week? For me, I've got to go with XMLA endpoints just because I've been waiting for this feature. It's very cool. It's lighting up a ton of possibilities inside of Power BI, but I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item? Maybe it was something I mentioned this week. Maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below and let me know. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.